Thank you for clicking on the video. If you're a returning viewer, I really appreciate you guys coming back. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Matt, and this is Secondhand Home Theater, where I talk about various home theater topics, but usually I talk about it through the lens of buying things used. And that's sort of what we're talking about here today uh, in terms of the actual physical media I'm gonna be showing. But the main topic here today is actually another challenge kind of video or tag kind of video that was passed along to me from my uh, friend over at Everything Home Theater, uh, which was tagged to him and passed along to him before that from another kind of friend of mine here on YouTube, Pedro's Movie Cavern. Uh, both those channels will be linked down below in the description. Uh, they kind of started a tag series, uh, you know, kind of challenge video in the similar vein of when I uh, did my overnight horror movie marathon video, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, whatever it was. Uh, Pedro's Movie Cavern started another one similar to that where he wanted to do a two-night film festival kind of setup, uh, but it was strictly 80s sci-fi movies. Uh, and he started it, uh, it got moved to Everything Home Theater, and then Everything Home Theater kind of tagged me. So that is exactly what I'm gonna do here in my video today. We're gonna talk about six movies split up over two nights, you know, so three on the first night, three on the second night. And the only real requirement is that it has to be an 80s sci-fi movie. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, and you can pick any six that you want there. Now, admittedly, uh, I could have copped out. I don't know if it's cop out, uh, but I could have really gone the easy route and just picked like some of my all time favorite movies like Aliens, Blade Runner, Robocop, whatever, and just said, yeah, watch those and just put them on this list and been done with it, whatever. Uh, which those movies are great and they're cult classics and like sci-fi classics for a reason, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make something a little bit more interesting with a little more variety and maybe a little more of a pattern to what I was doing. Uh, so that's kind of what I settled on doing is I didn't really pick all those and I tried not to pick sequels so that, you know, if the movie, the original movie wasn't made in the 80s, it wouldn't qualify. And so I didn't want to pick like Aliens, for example, that we couldn't watch the original because it was from 1979 and then pick the 86 sequel by itself as a standalone. You could watch it like that, but I didn't want to do it and I didn't want to just kind of harp on the Alien franchise like I always do on my channel. I mean, it's my favorite franchise. Obviously, I got a ton of content on here about it. So I wanted to do something a little different. And so you'll see a little bit of a pattern emerge here in what we're doing. So uh, that's kind of the setup of what we're doing today. Six movies split over two nights. So let's go and talk about night one of this sci-fi movie festival marathon challenge. Okay, so we're on to night number one, uh, the first three movies out of the six movie series spread over these two nights. And to start with, I am going to pick a cult classic, and even though I myself personally prefer the sequel that came out like 20 something years later, or 30 years later, or whatever it was when it came out, the original is still really good. It's of its time, but it was kind of groundbreaking in certain aspects. Uh, but anyways, the first movie we're going to pick on night one is going to be the original Tron, uh, which the version I have here is actually a two disc uh, THX certified like Disney collector's edition set on DVD. Uh, which the quality of this is pretty good. I mean, obviously, probably not as good as a modern transfer, maybe. But this this transfer here is really good. Uh, real quick, uh, I don't want to go into a whole bunch of, like, the synopsis and, like, plot lines. But more or less, with all these, I'll give you just a very basic rundown. Tron, if you've never seen it, is about a computer game creator uh, who makes kind of like a computer game, computer program that kind of sucks him into the program and kind of comes to life, more or less. And this whole movie is primarily shot within the digital, uh, like, game universe. So it's a lot of, like, kind of early 80s CGI. But to start off, I figured the first night, this is more of a family-friendly uh, movie. I can't say that about all the movies I've got here. But I figured why not pick something a little more family-friendly, a little more... Uh, you know, kind of easy uh, to get into for the first night to start everything out. And so that is going to be the original Tron, 
uh, from Disney on this two disc collector's edition set. Okay, so now we're on to the second film of night one. And like I said, I wanted to make a pattern and keep a pattern kind of between the two nights. So one of those things I'm going to do on the pattern is having an animation movie be the second film, both nights. And so here on night one, I figured, why not pick one of the most influential uh, anime movies at least in terms of the general American audience. I mean, it may not be the most, like, niche or most, you know, obscure, really, like, you know, uh, anime-centric, you know, person's, like, pick, but definitely one that's much more popular and mainstream that kind of permeates more of the general viewing audience, and at least that's what it happened with me because I'm not a huge anime fan. Uh, but I do think this qualifies. It falls into sci-fi, and that is uh, Akira. Uh, which this is, like I said, one of the most influential animes that kind of crossed over in the 80s and early 90s into America. Uh, the other one I wanted to put on here is Ghost in the Shell, but that was from the 90s, so it didn't qualify for this. But for this, uh, more or less, I mean, animes sometimes are a little bit harder to describe uh, in terms of the plot because they're a little bit different because it's from a, you know, overseas, you know, kind of Asian perspective of things. But more or less, this movie is just in the simplest terms about a group of like teenage kids uh, in a post kind of apocalyptic or post modern society, I guess. Uh, and some of them have these weird superpowers almost that have been kind of genetically implanted in them through like test experiments. And they're just learning how to use these powers and the government and military is trying to like capture them and bring them back into containment and things like that. Uh, and more or less, you know, things just devolve from there, you know, and things kind of escalate in terms of, you know, what happens, but more or less, that's kind of what it is. But like I said, Akira is one of the most influential anime uh, movies, in my opinion, that crossed over into American cinemas. Uh, again, I'm not a huge anime, you know, buff or freak, you know, so if I kind of mess up some of the, the uh, plot line or something, you know, with that, you can roast me in the comments. Uh, like I said, I'm not huge into anime, but Akira is definitely one of those that is really influential. And honestly, I never saw this film early on in my life. I actually saw this much later on. In fact, I didn't watch this film until I got this Blu-ray like five, six years ago. Uh, so I was really, really late to the anime party and to, you know, Akira and like Ghost in the Shell, the original one, some of the more highly influential films from anime. And so, uh, yeah, I would definitely pick for the second film in the uh, Two Night series. So second film on day one is going to be Akira. And for this version, this is the 25th anniversary Blu-ray uh, that I have here. So Akira, the second film on night one. Uh, to close out night number one, I, I, I really struggled with picking like aliens to throw it on here just because I love that movie so much. But like I said in the intro, I didn't want to do that. So I'm taking just a short sidestep a little bit from that, uh, which I'm going to put another one of my favorite sci-fi horror movies. Uh, and I, this may have been picked by, I can't remember if Pedro picked this or one of the other uh, film movie kind of things like this I've watched recently, but I'm throwing it on here anyways. I can't help it. We're going to close night one with John Carpenter's The Thing. Uh, next to Aliens, this is probably my favorite alien movie of all time in terms of like an alien creature. Uh, highly, highly, highly regarded uh, nowadays as one of the greatest sci-fi horror movies of all time. One of the most like tension and suspense filled movies in this kind of genre, in my opinion. Uh, a cult classic for many years, you know, wasn't really well received when it came out, but definitely got its following much later on. Uh, for those of you who've never seen this, which this is widely popular, I, I can't imagine you wouldn't know anything about this, but more or less, uh, this is a movie about an alien shapeshifter kind of creature imitating humans on a lone kind of research station up in Antarctica. And everyone starts to go crazy trying to decide who is an alien and who isn't an alien as things progress throughout the movie. And that's sort of the long and short of it without spoiling anything. But yeah, this is highly, highly regarded. Uh, like I said, next to Aliens, probably my favorite alien 
creature uh, feature of all time. I love this movie. Uh, great special effects, the tension, the suspense, everything is just awesome uh, on this. And this is the Shout Factory Collector's Edition that came out, I think maybe close to like 10 years ago, give or take now, like mid 2010s. Uh, but honestly, I've never seen the Arrow 4K release, but this is probably the best release of this film that I've seen uh, to date out there. So to end night one, we're gonna pick the uh, classic thing movie from John Carpenter. Okay, so now we're on to night two. And I wanted to open night two with another movie that's sci-fi, maybe not as popular as some of the other ones, but again, it's kind of easier to get into and maybe not as like hard sci-fi or have a lot of like over the top, like horror elements or something like that. And this one is a, a bit of a unique pick for me and another movie that I didn't see until much later on. In fact, I didn't actually watch this movie until like last year or maybe even earlier this year. Uh, I mean, it's, it was relatively recently that I even stumbled across this. Uh, but I think it's a really good movie uh, that actually has a lot of cool sci-fi connections to like other sci-fi universes that are really highly regarded in film history. But anyways, that is going to be uh, Outland with Sean Connery. Uh, this is actually a really good sci-fi movie, although it's sci-fi in that it's, you know, set kind of in the future out in space on like a space colony kind of thing. But more or less, this movie is like a Western. And I remember when I watched, I believe it was the commentary track on this, they talked about how they basically just wanted to make a Western, uh, a remake of one of the original uh, spaghetti Westerns of, I'm sure a better film buff out there will probably comment what it is down below, or I may even do some research and throw the little text title in here of what it is. But more or less, they wanted to do a Western, but they wanted to do it in space. And that's ultimately what this is. Sean Connery plays basically like what would be an old West sheriff kind of character, but he works for a colonization like company uh, on a planet out in the solar system who's hired in to like watch over this refinery place that's like colonizing the planet. And he's just the sheriff. He finds that there's some dirty dealings and stuff going on. And he ultimately has to like fight off all these people that are trying to kill him and like silence him so that the secrets don't get out of what's going on kind of underneath the surface of the colony. This is a really good movie. Uh, like I said, kind of like easier to get into because it's not really hard on sci-fi stuff. Like I said, it's more or less like a Western movie just set out in outer space. But the cool part about this, as I watched the commentaries and kind of like read some stuff online, the way this movie is set up and they make kind of allusions to it, a lot of people think this movie is set in the Aliens slash Blade Runner kind of universe because a lot of the logos and some of the other companies that are mentioned and kind of like in passing in the background on like billboards and stuff are companies from those other sci-fi franchises from Aliens and Blade Runner and just the aesthetic of everything that kind of like retro futuristic styling that both Blade Runner and Alien and Aliens had really is like permeates through this movie. And so a lot of people think that this movie here is set in that universe. It's just a third company uh, out of those three companies. It's really neat. Definitely something I think people should check out. This is just a standard Blu-ray edition that I have here. And uh, to open night two, we're going to pick Outland with uh, Sean Connery. Now we're on to the second film of night two. And this one might be a little bit controversial because it's not completely uh, a total sci-fi movie, but it has a lot of sci-fi stuff in it. And to stick with the animation side of things, like how I did Akira on night, night one, uh, I want to pick another animated film. And for that, I picked Heavy Metal, uh, which is basically a compilation film, uh, you know, that just has a bunch of like shorter film, short story films, kind of just like woven throughout the entire narrative of this movie. And not every one of these is sci-fi related, but there are a lot of sci-fi elements. There's stuff set out in space. Uh, one of the big ones on here, which I think is called like the taxi driver, uh, I believe is what it's called, is more or less uh, in some fashion 
the basic premise that kind of created the fifth element uh, in the 90s. It's basically the main story, more or less, uh, of that, just kind of tweaked a little bit you know, when they did the fifth element. But the core premise is basically the taxi driver segment here in Heavy Metal. Uh, but yeah, I wanna, wanna pick this as the second film on night two to kinda slot in as the animation film. Uh, like I said, there's some sci-fi, there's some fantasy and other kind of stuff, uh, horror almost kind of thrown in here. Uh, but it's kind of, it is adult, even though it's animation, same like Akira, it's more adult, but it has just a lot of like fun stuff, fun segments, and a lot of things that you can see allusions to other sci-fi and fantasy films that came before it and came after it in here, you know? So, uh, yeah, so to fulfill my animation kind of like segment I want to use on night two, we're going to pick Heavy Metal. And this is just the standard Blu-ray release that came out, I don't know, probably like 10 years ago or whatever. Uh, pretty good transfer, pretty good audio and everything that's on here. So yeah, Heavy Metal will be the second film on Night 2. And then finally, to close out Night 2, same like I kind of did with Night 1, I wanted to pick one of my like favorite sci-fi horror movies. Uh, where this is a little bit of horror, but it's more sci-fi action. And again, I didn't pick Aliens as much as I wanted to do that, but similar like how I picked The Thing for night one, I took, instead of a step to the horror side for The Thing, I took another step closer to action, similar to Aliens. And that is picking, again, one of my favorite movies growing up. Uh, it was really right there, like right under Aliens when I was younger. Uh, and that's going to be the original Predator <laughs> with Arnold Schwarzenegger on here. Uh, hopefully this isn't too reflective. Uh, this is actually the 4K movie set that has all four of the Predator films in it. Uh, I got this a number of years ago. It has the 4K versions and the Blu-ray versions in here. But one of the things that you got with this, at least when I bought this one, it still had the little mini posters in there. So that's what this is. This is a mock-up of the original poster on here. But again, kind of the premise for Predator. If you've never seen this movie, this is highly regarded. Again, this is like a huge uh, cult classic, Arnold Schwarzenegger classic 80s action film, big muscly guy shooting guns kind of thing. And the just very basic plot point premise of this is a bunch of commandos led by Arnold Schwarzenegger and a bunch of other like 80s action guys go into the jungles of like Columbia or whatever and Ultimately, they think they're there on like a military like operation mission kind of thing to save like a senator or something. And it turns out that they're actually being hunted by an alien, by the predator. Uh, and then it turns into, instead of being like a military movie, it turns into this group of commandos trying to survive against this alien that has more technology and is more advanced than them. That's kind of just the bare bones thing. Like I said, this is probably out of all these films I've talked about, this one is probably the most popular, most widely like out there in uh, referenced movies of any of these six uh, on my list. But again, I wanted to close with one of my favorites, a fan favorite, and kind of one of those things that like send people home happy. And uh, Predator here is definitely that. I mean, just a bunch of big muscly 80s guys shooting guns, blowing stuff up, you know, fighting an alien, you know, all this. Uh, this is great. You know, it's awesome 80s action. It's directed by John McTiernan, one of the best 80s action directors out there. And uh, yeah, so to close out uh, the actual festival completely in night number two, uh, I'm picking Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay, so there you go. Uh, there's my six films for the sci-fi 80s uh, film festival over the two nights. I really want to thank uh, Pedro's Movie Cavern uh, and then Everything Home Theater to kind of like tag me down the line uh, with all of this. I know I need to tag some other people following this uh, outro here. Honestly, I don't know who I'm going to tag. I've got two people in mind. I've tagged them previously uh, because I don't have a huge uh, connection base, if you will, here on YouTube. Um, Everything Home Theater, Pedro's Movie Cavern are some of the ones I associate with more. So when stuff like this happens, if they haven't been picked, I usually pick them. Uh, so since they picked each other and it kind of roundaboutly got to me at the end of that, I didn't really know who I was going to pick, but ultimately I decided on two people I've tagged, I think in my previous horror film video. Uh, and if they get around to it, that's great. If not, 
no hard feelings, the life happens. I definitely know that recently. But I'm gonna tag uh, Kevis and Films, who's another guy I've talked with quite a bit here on my channel, uh, and is really, you know, good guy, you know, with what he does. Uh, but Kevis and Films, I tagged him in the horror movie one. I'll tag him here again if he has time, you know, Kevis, if you have time, go ahead, you know, make one of these or make the horror one, doesn't matter, but I did want to tag you. And then the other one is someone I've tagged before, a little bit bigger channel than me, and that's Cinefessions. Uh, again, I don't know, I have to look, I don't know if he's done one like this in the past. I tagged him on my horror uh, video as well, and I, I don't know if he's gotten around to it, but he does a lot of his own content. So again, no harm, no foul, I'm not upset, it's perfectly fine. Uh, but I am gonna tag Cinefessions in here as well. And with that, we're gonna close this video up so I don't ramble on too long. I wanna say thanks to everyone who's watched all my content and stuck with me through everything that's gone on over the last few weeks. It's been a bit of a trying time, you know, losing my dog and everything that's gone on. And we've had some other family stuff going on on the side too. Not as serious as that, but some other stuff going on. Uh, so doing these YouTube videos is a welcome kind of distraction from all of that and kind of, you know, getting used to life without having our dog here. And I will be be finishing up the other videos in my Elite Screens projector screen series. Uh, kind of a spoiler, if you've looked behind me during all of this, my new screen is up there. Uh, you know, it's nowhere near as reflective as my other one and may sink kind of into the background a little more because of the material, but it is up over there. I will have those other videos coming out soon, uh, here shortly, you know, uh, in the feed. And with that, if you like my content, if you've stuck with me all the way through this video, however long it is, I appreciate it. Uh, if you wanna see more of my content, definitely consider liking and subscribing to the channel, hitting the bell notification, all that good YouTuber stuff that everybody always asks you to do. Uh, you can also check out the videos that are gonna be linked at the end here. You know, I, I wanna say thanks, you know, for sticking with me through all this. And I will see you the next time in the next video right here on Secondhand Home Theater. Thank you.